Welcome. Many of you have been very excited to move away from grid games and get into real world applications. Robotics is one of the biggest areas that is being advanced in leaps and bounds by reinforcement learning. So far we've learned the basic Bellman equation and how to solve it with dynamic programming if we have perfect information about the game and insane amounts of computing power. Then we learn how to estimate the value of states and develop a sensible policy simply by playing the game from experience with the Monte Carlo method. Finally, we took an important step toward deep reinforcement learning training online as we play with Q-learning. And now for something completely different. Now we're going to get a taste of something completely different. Most deep learning algorithms work with gradient descent and backpropagation. This is very effective, but also incredibly expensive in terms of computation. Advanced deep learning algorithms take forever to train unless you have a powerful, expensive GPU. In this tutorial, you are going to learn one of the fastest cutting edge breakthrough algorithms of 2018 in the field of robotics. For continuous motion tasks with a dense reward structure, it outperforms cutting edge deep learning algorithms while training up to 15 times faster. Augmented random search is a shallow learning algorithm which uses random noise and genetic evolution to get cutting edge performance on locomotion tasks. The basic building block of the ARS algorithm is a rudimentary perceptron, the basic building block of a neural network. This is also called a fully connected layer. In our case we have just an input layer and an output layer. Let's take a look at how it works. We're teaching a robot how to walk. The robot has sensors which output numbers. We normalize all the input data between 0 and 1. Next we have the output layer which outputs numbers which control the motors and actuators in the robot's legs. And since we're now working on a continuous control problem we no longer have binary 0 and 1 actions but continuous values which control the force of the motors. It could be negative 1 is full reverse, 0 is totally off, and 1 is full forward. Each input is connected to a single output via a weight. The number of weights is simply the number of inputs times the number of outputs. We can represent this as a matrix of numbers, and in equations this is generally represented with the Greek letter theta. The value of any output can be calculated as the sum of the inputs multiplied by their respective weights. Or we can calculate all the outputs at once simply by taking the dot product of the inputs and weights. If you don't fully understand how dot products work, essentially multiplying rows by columns, I've included a link below. I recommend you pause this video and work out a few examples on paper before continuing. In traditional deep learning, we calculate a loss function, a measure of how wrong our predictions were, and calculate very complicated derivatives in order to adjust the weights and minimize the loss. With augmented random search, we're going to do something much simpler. I think the best way to help you understand this is to start with an oversimplified explanation and gradually fill in the details. The gist of it is that each step we add random noise, small Greek letter delta, to the weights theta. We then test out the effect of the noise and if it improves rewards we keep it otherwise we discard it. It's a genetic evolution type of algorithm where we make slight changes always moving in the direction of improvement. All right. Now we're going to move a layer deeper into the details about how this is implemented. Instead of gradient descent, we're going to calculate updates to our weights using a much simpler algorithm. It's called the method of finite differences. Step one, generate a matrix the same shape as our weights with Gaussian noise, that is, random numbers in a normal distribution. Clone two versions of our current weights. Add the noise to weights positive, subtract the noise from weights negative. 4. Test out both versions in the environment over one episode each and collect the total rewards. Rewards positive, rewards negative. Step 5. Update the weights with this formula. Weights plus equals learning rate or alpha times rewards positive minus rewards negative times delta. Step 6. Repeat the above until we've reached the desired performance. This algorithm works best if all of our inputs are squeezed between 0 and 1. This is called normalizing and we'll do this with a standard normalization algorithm. So the normalized inputs equal the inputs minus the observation mean 
divided by observation sigma. Sigma simply means standard deviation. And if you don't fully understand the concepts of standard deviation and variation, there's a link below for further study. In order to track the mean, we're going to keep a running average. So the running average is the last mean plus the current observation minus the last mean divided by the total number of observations we've taken so far. All right, let's see how the main training loop works. First, we're going to generate a number, num deltas of deltas, and test them in parallel. So for example, if num deltas is 16, then we'll test 16 positive deltas and 16 negative deltas for a total of 32 experiments. And we're going to run num deltas episodes with positive and negative variations. We collect rollouts as reward positive, reward negative, and delta tuples. We calculate the standard deviation of all the rewards. We sort the rollouts by the maximum reward and select the best num deltas rollouts. Here's our final update formula. First, we're going to calculate a variable called step. So we simply loop over all the best rollouts and we calculate the reward positive minus reward negative times delta and we add them all up. Then we have our step. Now, theta equals theta plus our learning rate divided by the number of best deltas times the standard deviation of the rewards times the step value we calculated. Next, we're going to do an evaluation. We play an episode with the new weights and see how we did and print the score. Then we continue until the desired performance is reached or the rewards stop improving. You may need to install a few dependencies to get the code to work. You can use whatever dependency manager you're most comfortable with. First, you'll need OpenAI Gym. Then, to get the bipedal walker working, install Box2D. And, optionally, PyBullet, which is an open source replacement for the expensive Mujoko environments. All right, now that we know the basic algorithm and understand how it works, let's dive into the actual code. All right, the first thing we'll see after some basic imports is the HP class. This stores the hyperparameters for tuning. NB steps is how many full training steps we'll run. Episode length is the maximum number of steps in an episode. Learning rate is how much we update the weights each iteration. Num deltas is the number of variations of random noise we generate each training step. Each one of these will be run for two episodes, the positive and negative version. Num best deltas is the number of deltas we will use to update the weights, sorted by the highest reward from both the positive and negative variations. This must be less than or equal to num deltas. Noise, the strength of the random noise. Seed, the random seed used for generating the noise. ENV name, the name of the AI gym environment. Record every. Record a new video after this number of steps has passed. Next, we'll move on to the normalizer class. This uses a very standard method to squeeze the inputs from our robot sensors between 0 and 1, which helps our policy converge. The init function simply creates empty arrays the size of our input space. The observe function takes an array of inputs, the sensors of our robot, and computes a running average as well as the variance. We clip the variance slightly above zero to avoid division by zero. The normalize function subtracts the observation mean from the current input and divides by the standard deviation. Moving down to the policy class. This is responsible for generating random noise, updating the policy from the rollouts, and turning input into actions. The init function creates a matrix of the correct size with initial weights all set to zero. The evaluate function turns input into actions. If it's called with no parameters, it takes a straight dot product of the existing weights and the inputs. If it's called with a noise delta and a direction of either positive or negative, it will apply the noise and then evaluate the action space. The sample deltas function generates an array of random noise matrices, the length being our num deltas parameter. Finally, the update function applies a formula we went over previously to update the weights based on the rollouts. All right, now we get to the meat and potatoes of the algorithm, the ARS trainer class. This is where the main action happens. 
the init function does all the setup work including creating the environment and initializing the normalizer and policy classes. Wrappers.monitor allows us to record periodic videos of the robot in action. Monitor Deer is a folder where the video files will be saved. Video Callable is a function which determines whether to record a given episode returning true or false. The force option will delete all existing files there if it's set to true. The explore function runs one episode in one particular direction, positive or negative, and returns the sum of the rewards accumulated. Note that we're clipping the reward between negative one and one, which prevents outliers from distorting our weights. All right, now let's get into the main training loop. We generate a list of random noise deltas. Then for each delta generated, we play one episode adding the delta to our weights, and one episode subtracting the delta from our weights. We compute the standard deviation of all the rewards returned. Now we sort the rollouts by highest reward, the positive and negative variations, and keep only the chosen number of the best deltas. We create a list of rollouts with the positive rewards, the negative rewards, and the delta applied. We update the policy using the rollouts generated and calculated standard deviation of the rewards. Finally, we play one episode with the updated weights and print the score. Alright, now let's take a look at the main code. First, we create a directory to store the videos. Then we customize any hyperparameters we want to customize. We create an instance of the ARS trainer class. And finally, we run the train function. Alright, let's put some gas in the tank and see what this baby can do. All we have to do is run the ARS.py file. I think you'll be very pleased with the results. So you can see that we've gone from falling over right away to drunken stumbling to walking quite well. It may not be the most elegant step in the world, but it gets our robot from point A to point B very effectively. As usual, I highly encourage you to code this yourself using the algorithms we went over in the slides. Play around with the hyperparameters. Can you improve the results? Try different environments like the Pi Bullet Half Cheetah or the Lunar Lander. What other tasks does augmented random search get good results on? One way to make this significantly faster is to employ multiprocessing to utilize more than one CPU core. You can run several episodes in parallel. This is beyond the scope of the tutorial, but I've included a link to a GitHub repo that has implemented ARS with multiprocessing extremely well. This is Colin Scow, and I'll see you again soon for another cutting-edge reinforcement learning tutorial. Until then, happy coding!